Are your LLMs frequent hallucinations slowing down your workflows? Or are they even causing problems with your clients? Not anymore. Hi, I'm Stuart. I'm here with Yuval from AI21. In this video, we will demonstrate how, with their new AI Agent Engine API, how this resolves these issues and gets you back on track. Welcome back. What are you going to be showing us today? Today, what we're going to do is we're going to essentially use the Agent Engine API to build something which is a bit more complex uh, than what we've seen in the previous video, but it's something that can actually go to production right now. Cool. Okay, so let's say, uh, again, let's just quickly remind ourselves, right, we have some problems with LLMs. What do we want to solve, and where are we here today? So right, we talked about how AI agents building is not that easy as it sounds. It has a lot of reliability issues, and it has a lot of edge cases and some things that you really need to tune and make sure yeah. that you're on top of that. Which I'm sure is something we've all experienced. Yeah, this is something that, right, from first uh, coding one-on-one, -on -one, like intro to computer science, through uh, generative AI in general, up to AI agents. Yeah. Okay, so what we uh, want to really talk about today is how we can make sure everything is reliable. How can we get reliability guarantees? Uh, what can we just do uh, in order to take this uh, like weird models, the things that are not as predictable, like hallucinations is something that yeah. I'm sure everybody knows, right? This is like the word, right? It's something, it's a problem uh, with LLMs. Everybody knows them, like no matter where you work, you don't have to work in AI to know that these models are hallucinate, right? There are a lot of famous uh, problems. I think that the most uh, famous of them all is the Air Canada one. Yes. Right? You, of course, you, you know them, right? Like every time something like this happens, every time you need to build a presentation, it's like, sure, like this is the problem. Uh, there's like a lot of examples, but this one is where they actually were found liable, for those of you who don't know, and they had to pay uh, some sort of a refund uh, for a client that spoke with a chatbot. Okay, so every time an enterprise wants to put something like this in production, they have to make sure it's reliable. And they have you know? to have guardrails. Yeah, totally. Like you have to know that you can actually trust that. Otherwise, you cannot replace the human validators that you have everywhere. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do today. Show you how something that usually solved with an LLM, something that is already commercialized. Uh, in the e-commerce uh, industry can be actually be with more guarantees, with more reliability using an AI agent. Sounds amazing. Okay, so right, we, I'm guessing that if you uh, know a little bit about uh, use cases or things with e-commerce, you know that product descriptions is like a pain, right? It's something that you need to write a lot of, usually in the same structure. You want to catch the uh, eye. Right, you want people to buy based on the description, but you have you need it to be grounded, right? Everything there is a detail that yep. has to be correct. Yes. Okay, so this is something that LLMs are really born to do. Give them some information, write something in this structure, in this format, based on those things. This is something that good LLMs can do, but even the best LLMs sometimes uh, do something which is eh, or they hallucinate. Or sometimes it's not the LLM's fault. Sometimes the garbage in yes. goes just the garbage out, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the people, well, it's always the people who are to blame. But sometimes it's the, uh, the people who wrote the initial details who got it wrong. Yep. So this is what we're going to do uh, today. So essentially, let's just make sure that we understand the premise here. Okay? Sure. These are things from the e-commerce world that I was not familiar with. So let's just set the scene. Okay, so there are a lot of uh, marketplaces, such as right, Amazon is a marketplace, uh, Decathlon is a marketplace. Yep. Yeah, a, a lot of uh, places where you can buy from different sellers. Okay, so let's say that we have a seller which is a scooter uh, company. Okay. okay. So this seller essentially comes and brings free text and uploads some product descriptions and attributes and images, and then the marketplace have to publish that, yes, right? But they have to have a lot of validators in their team because otherwise you can get something like this. Okay, yes. So you can see here an example from Target where you have a scooter that has number of wheels four, four. right? This is because the seller made a mistake or didn't really notice or something like this. 
-hmm. So what we're going to do here today is to really show how a marketplace can automate their validation process here and make sure that all those details are correct. Let's just see an example of a very, very small uh, video. OK, so you can see here, this is a scooter uh, company. OK, and you can see color red material wood. That's like. Okay, this is not uh, what happens here. Mm -hmm. So this is, you can see this is an example of the Marketplace page. As then you can see here, really we're just like asking it, please verify. And what happens is that okay, this uh, code is running. You can see here again uh, the execution graph like we've seen in the previous example. There is an agent here behind the scenes that really wants to validate. But how, how do we validate something like mm -hmm. that? Right? How yeah. do you do that? So, you can think about two ways. The first one is to do it using organizational data. Okay, you really want to cross-reference this with all the others, um, all the other data that you have on these products. Another thing that you can do, which is also very realistic, is you know that these products are usually right come in different uh, seller, like in different websites as well. Yes. In this case, what we have are actually trusted uh, places on the web that you can really cross-reference with them and verify. OK, and that's the same way we were talking about putting the quality of data inbound. Yeah, exactly. So maybe the seller provided you in the marketplace some uh, details, but what you really want to do is to cross-reference that. And instead of hiring a lot of validators, which takes a lot of time, and this is really a tedious work. Like, yes. I don't know how much you had to like, you, you get a lot of mistakes when you do it because you're yeah, it's, manual it's data validation has always been hard. Yeah, it's it's a drag. So what we're doing here is we're showing how we can do this work with an agent, with our agent engine. Good. So let's dive into the work, the code. Yep. Okay. So this is like a bit more complex than what we had uh, previously. Yeah. Okay. A bit taking it up a notch. Yeah. Here we're adding the web search and a bit more uh, steps. Okay. So you can see here. First of all, we're creating an assistant where. You can see here in the tools, now we are allowing it both web search and we wanted to have file search. So both okay. RAG and yep. internet connectivity. And okay, so this is what we're doing. Again, creating a client uh, as usually. And then we are opening a thread. Okay, so again, a thread, something which is uh, has a memory, right? You don't have to give the history uh, all over again. You don't have to uh, always give all the input. You can just uh, lay back and it will remember everything. Okay, so again, now we're just going. You can see here, we this is just how we run it, and now what we're actually doing. So again, this is a plan which is comprised from steps. Okay, so the first step is really get all the seller attributes mm -hmm. right from the uh, from the description. Yep. Okay, and here again, this is a very simplified version because this is like a scooter company. Yep. We know that these are the attributes that are important. And now what we want to do, OK, you can see here the class. This is how item attribute looks like. Again, this is something which we did manually for this example. OK. Next, what we want to do is to go and really validate there in the, in the web. Yes. OK, and again, this is limited for uh, uh, trusted uh, web sources. But then what we will do is we're really getting everything. OK, we're really getting the validation for that. And if we will just go back briefly to the demo, you can see that how do we present it? OK, so you just press it here. And then this is the current is 5, but the new one is 3, and it's so on and three. so on. Yeah. yeah. So this is something which really you can just put in production with not a lot of work. Again, this is something that you can also add the update automatically and so on. Mm -hmm. It depends on like how we are actually going to be ready for that. Uh, but th it is validation. Yep. It is work with that. You can also. With not a lot of work, uh, it's not here, but actually get um, add a, uh, add another tool that, based on the image, really extracts details from there, and then you have another source, yes. not just a web search. Okay, yeah. and over there, just you can just put it in the tools; it will work. So it's a great way for validating things, just for for marketplace, or even validating just images of what's actually in the image. Yeah, it's actually the image part is probably. Uh, like from, we have a lot of experience with working with retailers and e-commerce, and we found out that a lot of the details are actually in the image. Yes. Um, so now you can also do something like that. There's a lot of problems with. Uh, I used to work in the retail industry like several uh, years ago, and a lot of people just buy because of the image, 
And although there is always like that, right? The image is not uh, necessarily the pro. Uh, not like, necessarily. It's not uh, necessarily saying it much. It's still what people expect. Yeah. So you can also think about how you can validate based on text. Is the image correct? Yes. And this is something which you really. All, all the premise here is that you can really connect all the tools. Like you don't have to use our LLMs even, right? You can use whatever language models you want. It's just another tool. This is essentially an agent agent, like an orchestration layer, where you can use whatever models you want. You can use whatever external tools you want. It comes built in with RAG and the web search, but you can add whatever. And this is something that will make your life much easier and give you a lot of quality guarantees. We like quality guarantees. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Yvonne. That was really interesting. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and we'll see you soon.